Hey, Wes. Hello, Larry. Hey, everybody listening. Maybe like two of you. I don't know. Uh, welcome to the cutting room floor. Uh, and we've got good news and bad news about what this is. Um, the, the bad news is we just saw in an article, right, that like, where, where's Cape Coral ranked on commute times? So, yeah, I, we were talking about this yesterday morning when we met for a teaching team that Cape Coral ranks a third worst in the state of Florida. And we're ranked nationally as one of the worst commute times at 59 minutes of anybody in the country. So if you thought traffic was bad, it's worse. Man, like when I was in Illinois, I had like a three minute commute to the church and like yeah. 59 minutes is, is but, something. But now your commute's going to get even worse because we saw later in the day the <laughs> gift that the uh, main bridge is going to be closed here uh, that crosses the river into Fort, downtown Fort Myers. And that's where you have to go a lot as yeah. uh, leading our central campus. And so you got stuck on your way home yesterday as, a, as I the first gift of what's to come. It, it's already been kind of rough since they've been doing the construction. Um, so it took me almost right at an hour from uh, central campus parking lot to my house in North Fort Myers. So now you have the average commute. Yeah, uh, I've, was, I've hit it. I've arrived. And yeah. they haven't even closed the bridge yet. So That's what I'm saying. More yeah, to wait. come. Wait till we get going. So this is maybe a good opportunity for you when you're sitting in car line or you're sitting in traffic to uh, come and spend a little time with us as we want to dive deeper into the message that was uh, preached at all three sir, uh, all three campuses of Grace Church this past mm -hmm. Sunday. Yeah, so that's the good news is we've got something for your commute time. Uh, so the cutting room floor is a phrase that we use a lot at teaching yeah. team. And maybe for those that aren't familiar, we should explain what teaching team is. Let's start there. Uh, in the first place. So it, it's kind of a unique approach that, that Grace Church has to our, uh, our, our sermon writing um, process. Um, it's something that I love. I, 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 was go I was new to it, so I didn't know how I was going to react to it, but I really like it. Uh, so we get together every Monday morning, uh, all the pastors and, uh, and different communicators from yep. across Grace Church, and we prep the message for two weeks out. Uh, and there's just, there, there's so much fun and life in that, and there's a lot of give and take, and uh, I just think we have an incredible team that comes up with so much incredible stuff and God leads us through that and uh, doing the Bible work and what do we want folks from Grace Church to hear. But the phrase cutting room floor comes because we have to leave so much behind That's <laughs> on right. the cutting room floor. That's right. The work after the first drafts are written and then each one writes it in their own voice with their own personality. Mm -hmm. uh, we agree on what needs to be like what's essential that we're all going to do across the campuses. And then uh, we also believe God wants to use the unique gifts and personality and experience of each communicator. So when they, we come back together, we have so much stuff to work with that the challenge has been for me on Saturday mornings to sit down and uh, come out with the scissors and cut down mm -hmm. what's uh, not going to be able to just fit because of time. And then it gets even worse because sometimes God opens a door for part of the message to really hit home and uh, we have to slow it down a little bit. And this past weekend, for example, at one of the services, I didn't get to any of the three points. Okay. <laughs> so the, the, the second service, it was done in about 90 seconds or less. And uh, so only the first service got the whole message. So it's, it's just a great opportunity, perfect timing for this week. Yeah, because if you tried to do all three of those points, there would have been smoke signals from the tech booth. And uh, uh, The children's ministry is what I'm most uh, concerned about. Yes. Um, yeah. Because I so love what they do over there, and our leaders are fantastic. I don't want to do anything to rock their boat. I think one of the, one of the gifts of this could be having these conversations is – all of the context of our campuses are so different right. from one another. So as we were texting Sunday afternoon about the messages, the things that I leaned in on more at Central uh, were things that you had to move more quickly through here uh, yeah. and, and vice versa. It gives us an opportunity for all of our campuses to hear from, from multiple voices. And yep, and we hope in the coming weeks, we're going to pilot this for a few weeks and see how it goes. No promises that this will be going on years from now, but uh, we do uh, want to have Pastor Sherry come on. Uh, and coming up also, Pastor Casey is going to be one of our first writers, and so she'll be uh, coming on the podcast. So there'll be some different voices to give you different perspectives from around Grace Church, and that's a unique thing for us yeah. uh, as a congregation. Yeah, I think it would be a great opportunity for, for all of our campuses to grow together, and uh, we'll see where, uh, where, where God takes us in that. So yeah. um, this last weekend, we kicked off a new series called Life Together, yep. and uh, we're just talking about what is the gift of community, how we're made for community, um, and it's where we're going in these three weeks. But So this week we started, um, it coincided with Pentecost, the, the mm -hmm. birth of the church, uh, and 
that was just such a, a, a rich story for us to get into. And we were talking right before we came on. Um, the, the text that we go to on Pentecost is the day of Pentecost where the Holy Spirit shows up in, with fire and wind. And uh, uh, I, I, I did notice that all the folks that have been through Hurricane Ian tensed up a little bit when you talk yeah, about the wind. We don't necessarily want the Holy Spirit to come into force of a wind, but the fire sounds cool. Yeah. So the Holy Spirit just shows up on these, these beleaguered um, followers of Jesus, 120 of them waiting for the promise of the Holy Spirit that Jesus said, the Holy Spirit's coming and you're going to be empowered and they're waiting. And then when the Holy Spirit shows up, like incredible things happen. Right. 3000 people are baptized, uh, that day. And that was one of the things we were talking about. Like that's something that you could easily get addicted to uh, oh, in the church world. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Is the results, uh, that are out there, especially for a preacher, you know, to put 3000 to come in one day. Wow. Uh, yeah. that's incredible, but that's not really the substance of the story. Those are the signs. Yeah. And I, I think there's a temptation, um, uh, in the church to to elevate the signs, yep. like we, we like those things where we can obviously say, okay, the spirit showed up in this way, um, and that temptation is there to seek after the signs more than what comes out of the signs. Yeah, a few weeks uh, ago in my message, I used a quote that uh, that beggars of God seek His hand and lovers of God seek His face, and uh, what the Lord wants for us is to not just seek the things that he can do that are spectacular or the, the hand up or the hand out or the hand across. He wants us to seek his face, to have a relationship with him. And that's where the true friendship forms uh, mm -hmm. with the Lord in a, in a mysterious way, but in a very real way. And that's what I think this was written for us to, to understand and understand what's possible now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, and I think it comes with, we talk a lot about uh, having maturing faith, uh, and I think that comes with it. Uh, I was talking to uh, my wife the other day, watching a baseball game, like how my tastes in baseball have changed over the years. Like when I was a kid, I wanted to see a million home runs, like, okay. and I was, you know, near St. Louis when McGuire broke the home run record, and the older I get, though, the more I want to see a tight defensive game. Like, so it's it's changed for me. I, so I, you are a mature baseball watcher. Right. I, I am not. So, you know, I watch maybe one baseball game in completion every five years. Yeah. And so uh, when I was a kid, though, I used to go to uh, our local team in Louisville, and uh, I, used to, I learned to keep score. Mm -hmm. So I know there's a whole lot going on that I am no longer aware of, because I right now I want the fireworks. Right. And that's where my where my daughters are at. Like, if there's not runs being scored in buckets, they don't want to watch anymore. Right. And I'm great if it's the eighth inning and there's been one hit and it's a pitcher's duel. Yeah. So I think that's kind of what I see in acts here. Uh, I used to really look at the day of Pentecost and go, "That's what I want. I that's want right. you know three thousand uh, yeah. people coming to faith in in after one sermon instead of yeah. you know one after three thousand sermons." Yeah. Uh, at the end of Acts chapter two, there's this summary statement, mm -hmm. uh, and that's what we really lean into. It's a summary of what life looked like among the believers, mm -hmm. and this is the real gift of Pentecost, yep. uh, I think. And so Acts two forty two um, says they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship to the breaking of bread and the prayers all came upon everyone because many signs and wonders were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together, had all things in common. They would distribute proceeds to all as any had need day by day. As they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home, ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number, those who were being saved. Wow. That's the church I want to be a part that of. That is but. amazing. Yeah. The key word in there, I think, though, is the, the, the real miracle is the word devotion. Right. Because these folks that were, they had numbered 120, uh, then 3,000 more were added suddenly. They they devoted themselves, and in the word studies that we did as a teaching team, on that word devoted, it means to be steadfast and to be committed to one another more uh, than anything else, even though what a difficulty comes mm -hmm. our way. And in the early church, that was especially needed because they were facing not just traffic, they were facing persecution. Mm -hmm. And so to meet together was really an act of faith and trust, but they needed one another. In fact, there's 36 one another verses in scripture, mm. and you can't live those out. I can't live those out if I just practice a solitary, isolated mm -hmm. uh, faith. And that's that's one of the uh, the gifts of our our Wesleyan Methodist movement. Is John Wesley drilled that there's no such thing as solitary religion. Yeah. And so that devotion to one another yeah. is, is huge and through through everything through 
Through it is, and that's the rub, though, isn't it, Larry? Because yeah. that's where it gets hard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because while it's the greatest gift, you know, what what happened here, uh, at least my uh, observation at uh, this campus, was that people leaned in on the reality of just somebody naming that church can be a toxic place sometimes. Mm -hmm. If we're not following the teachings of Jesus and mm -hmm. not following the Holy Spirit, not looking uh, and just looking for the wow factor, mm -hmm. or uh, then that that makes uh, us kind of in charge. That puts mm -hmm. us in the driver's seat, and that is not uh, not our role. You know, mm -hmm. we are we are to wait upon the Holy Spirit, which is not real you know exciting mm -hmm. when you first hear about it. But that's what they were doing. They were they were waiting for the Holy Spirit. We have a mutual mentor through video and uh, books, John Tyson who studied revivals throughout history, and this is, of course, the greatest one ever. It's mm -hmm. the one that sparked the whole thing. And he said his summary was, you know, all the different denominations, all the different expressions of faith, that the common denominator was God comes where he's wanted. Mm -hmm. And the Holy Spirit comes where the Holy Spirit is wanted and invited. It's that simple. And so wherever we are in this very moment, we can open our hearts to the reality that God's Spirit is not only with us, like we celebrate at Christmas, the Holy Spirit wants to move inside of us. Mm -hmm. That's the joy of Pentecost mm -hmm. and the good news, I think. Yeah. I, I think it was it was really important uh, in that first draft you wrote uh, to acknowledge the church hurt uh, yeah. piece. And that's, that's something that, um, unfortunately, we want to try to gloss over because you and I have both seen the ugly side of, of church and a lot of people in, in our congregation have, have seen that. We want to rush past it, but I think it's important to name it yeah. And then get to the get to the good stuff. Like th yeah. this is the possibility of uh, Acts two isn't just what was; it's what could be. Yeah. Again. And part of that is to work through our hurts mm -hmm. that happen in the church, uh, even in a healthy church. Sometimes, you know, my phrase is that life is a contact sport. We're always bumping into one another, mm -hmm. and that is that is true. It's true on our teams. Uh, it's true. Uh, I think even in the early church, from what we have from scripture, mm -hmm. sometimes it got a little tense. Yeah. And so to hang in there, to be devoted to one another, means we're going to work through those things, and we can be assured because Jesus promises His presence. Uh, whenever two or three are gathered in his name, and that's in the context of settling our disagreements mm -hmm. and settling our, our differences. When I sin against you uh, or something like that, and you come to me and say, hey, we need to work this out. Mm -hmm. That's the hard work of the church uh, and, and what it means to to be really devoted, I think. I mm -hmm. mean, whenever when it's going great, you know, then of course that that's easy, mm -hmm. but it's when things get difficult. Mm -hmm. And so while the ugliness is a, is a reality, the potential is there if we'll lean in when things get difficult. Mm -hmm. And... Um, at the end of the day, that's what makes the church so unique. Because if I don't like a restaurant, I just won't go back. Mm -hmm. But the dominant image in the New Testament is that of a family, mm -hmm. uh, that we are the family of God together. And so that, that raises the bar quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And it means that when things are difficult, I need to go to a person and, and try to mm -hmm. make peace as far as it depends on me. So I think the, the gift in their, in their devotion was a, uh, to one another was enabled by those four things they were doing. Yeah. And, and they didn't just do it once. This yeah. wasn't just, they weren't just getting together for, for prayer and teaching and fellowship once a week. They were doing this every day when you go into the rest of that summary statement. They're going to the temple together every day, which at that point is not a friendly place to be necessarily. <laughs> right. You know, <laughs> yeah. if, you're, yeah. if you're out about following Jesus yeah. uh, and they're doing this every day and they're, they're, they're sharing meals in their homes, like they're showing up for one another over and over yeah. and over again. And these practices continued for hundreds of years as the uh, revolution of, of divine love mm -hmm. took off. Yeah. And so, yeah, these, it, you know, it's kind of which comes first, you know, the devotion or the practices, mm -hmm. but the practices help. It reinforced the devotion, mm -hmm. and so it's it's both of those things. Yeah, I think it's both and. Like yeah. the the Holy Spirit is is as a result of Pentecost is putting into them this deep devotion and love for one another. And in our culture, in our time, and probably in most cultures and times, uh, we don't like somebody or they've they've harmed us. We may just tolerate them. Right. Yeah, and years ago, uh, Bishop James Swanson, I heard him say, the Holy Spirit does not give me tolerance for you. He gives me love for you. Ooh. Yeah. That's the difference in their devotion. They're going to keep showing up for one another and keep doing these things together, even when it's hard. Yeah. Yeah. And again, that's what makes the, the church unique, uh, because we are called to be this family that, that actually works through differences and brings healing to relationships, mm -hmm. uh, just as Jesus has brought healing to our relationship with God. Mm -hmm. We're to be uh, 
peacemakers and not just peace wishers and peace hopers and peace prayers, but we're to make peace first within our relationships within the family of God, and then we'll have uh, some tools and some ideas on how we can do that with other people. When we look into Jesus' commands, like love our enemies, mm -hmm. when things get even more difficult. Mm -hmm. And so the church brings these uh, beautiful gifts to a person's life. And when we were settling on what we call the big idea in teaching mm -hmm. team, uh, we looked at some resources from a group called Orange, and they um, really focused their ministry on teens and children and families, and they did the largest comprehensive study of uh, teenagers that's been uh, done, uh, I think, in history, where they, they interviewed thousands of teenagers about what their needs are and, and why they would look to their, their healthy church and their healthy youth groups, and three things emerged, that they uh, needed a place where they could find belonging, they needed a place where they could find their identity, and a place that they could find their purpose mm -hmm. in life. So those when those are working right, mm -hmm. and when the Spirit of God is moving, uh, my contention uh, that I said in the message I preached here is that there's no more beautiful place on earth mm -hmm. than when the local church is working right mm -hmm. in those those ways. And I can't think of a, of a single place when the church is working right. I can't think of a single place that I find those three things other than the church. Yeah. And, and I've looked. I've tried. You know, yeah. we, we've we've tried to find life and, and belonging and identity and purpose and all sorts of places and things and yeah. uh, and people and time and time again, I just keep finding it in the gift of the church. Yeah, that, that was that was born on on Pentecost. So, I wonder if we might just just talk through those three, especially since uh, at the Cape Campus you didn't get to, to, well, to go through them yeah. all. Yeah, I yeah. Just... So, uh, so we said in a in a spirit driven church, so in a church where it's working right, we're waiting on the Spirit, we're devoted to one another, we find belonging, identity, and purpose. Let's say a word about belonging. Yeah, many people uh, need to belong before they ever believe. Mm -hmm. And belonging is one of the deepest needs in our soul uh, to be fully known and also fully loved. Mm -hmm. Now, where can you go and find that? Mm -hmm. You know, the disciples, many times they didn't even agree on a lot of sensitive issues. Politics would be one. Mm -hmm. They came from different political parties. They came from different walks of life. They mm -hmm. came from uh, different stations and, and uh, different places. So Jesus brought this ragtag group of folks together uh, to create something brand new that had never been invented in human history called the church. Mm -hmm. And the church, again, is not a building. It's the ecclesia, the gathered people of God, mm -hmm. people that gather in the name of God. And that's when the, the real incredible, deep, life-transforming stuff starts, and it starts with belonging. Mm -hmm. I need to know that you, you, you will accept me and love me uh, and that I can, I can be here and be myself. Mm -hmm. uh, that doesn't happen anywhere else. I mm -hmm. went years ago to the swamp to watch the Florida Gators play Kentucky, and I was That's informed to not walk into that stadium in Gainesville wearing a blue Kentucky football shirt. Number one, we were going to lose. We all knew it. And uh, number two is I could get, you know, ostracized by the community. So I bought a Florida shirt, and when we got there, I changed in the parking lot and put on my Florida shirt. People were giving me high fives. I belonged, but I was a fraud. Mm -hmm. You see? Yeah. And uh, a lot of times that's the way we have to operate in life. Mm -hmm. And that is not the case in the church. It's come as you are, mm -hmm. and we believe Jesus. And then our call is to love people right where they are. Mm -hmm. And again, that's where it's difficult. Mm -hmm. That, But that spirit of belonging is like no other place mm -hmm. on planet Earth. So I said a couple weeks ago when, when I was preaching at the Cape Campus that that was one of the pieces in my coming to Jesus at camp. Like I'd never met a group of people like that, that, yeah. that wanted to be my friend. I didn't, didn't have anything to offer them. They, they were curious about me. I had no idea why. Yeah. Like, they wanted me to be there. Yeah. And it was the weirdest experience of my life. But yeah. that weirdness is what, what, what drew me in. I was able to belong with them. They didn't know anything about me, what I believed, you know, didn't go to church, anything. And I, yeah. I could belong with them. Yeah. Jesus' invitation is come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, right? I mean, it's not a, it's not a line up and do these certain things, mm -hmm. and then we'll accept you. It's, it's just come as you are. Mm -hmm. And your testimony was a powerful uh, you know, example of that. And uh, I think we can link that message into this podcast mm -hmm. so that uh, those that are watching can, can maybe go back and hear that if they didn't. And so belonging is one of the deepest needs of our soul. And just to hear and to experience a place of belonging mm -hmm. is life transforming mm -hmm. for somebody. Um, and from there, then uh, we discover that we, we need community mm -hmm. because just as uh, 
The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit exists in community. This is who God is. God is three persons in one and one person's mm -hmm. in three. If you're trying to figure this out right now, I encourage you uh, to take a deep breath because this is called, even by theologians that we love and respect mm -hmm. and have studied under, this is called a holy mystery. Mm -hmm. This is where some of those brilliant minds on earth just mm -hmm. throw up their hands and go, well, it's a God thing. That's right. And so how that happens, I don't exactly know, but I don't really want a God that I can understand with my right. brain. I got a D in uh, chemistry in high school, so why would I want to be the expert on this? So God exists in community, and because we are made in the image of God, we exist and are called to exist and made for mm -hmm. community, and we discover that in belonging. Mm -hmm. And uh, we hear so many stories and testimonies of people walking in the Shores campus, walking in the Central campus, walking into the Cape campus and say, wow, I just felt like I was at home. Mm -hmm. Like I felt like these people welcomed me. Mm -hmm. And so it begins with belonging, but that's not all. Mm -hmm. It uh, continues when people can have an opportunity to discover their identity. Mm -hmm. And identity is a very hot topic right now. Mm -hmm. And there's lots of options for identity. We can identify with our profession or our education or the neighborhood we live in, the schools we attended. There's uh, places that we can find affinity and, and, and uh, some kind of identity with those. You know, uh, you are a Cubs fan, mm -hmm. right? I mean, that's very loud and clear. Mm -hmm. I hope I've made it known that I'm a University of Kentucky fan. And uh, I think I've done a good job at that. But I'm way more than that. Right. And so it's more than just the groups that we, uh, ha you know, we, we like or whatever. It's more than just even our roles. You're, mm -hmm. you're a father of three, three girls. Your van just broke. You got to get them some air conditioning. Right. So it's a very big part of your life right now. Yeah. Unfortunately, yes. <laughs> but there's more to your life. There's <laughs> right. more to Larry Thank than, God. Just, Thank than, God. Than, than just that, even as joyful as it is, as mm -hmm. much as you are devoted and love your kids. Mm -hmm. So it goes on and on. And now our young people especially – are bombarded by options of an identity that they can they can claim or choose some mm -hmm. group that they can belong to, and uh, so this this discussion of identity has become really hot. Well, uh, God wants to give each person a gift of identity through Jesus, and it begins in our very creation that mm -hmm. we are made in the image of God. Mm -hmm. Every person on this planet is made in the image of God. Let that one sink in, mm -hmm. and then when Jesus comes and we accept the gift that Jesus brings to us. As you did at camp, mm -hmm. he gives us an identity. We don't have to search for it. Mm -hmm. We don't have to earn it. I don't have to change my shirt to a gator shirt so that I fit in. I can just be me and accept that I'm made in the image of God. And Jesus can move into my heart through the power of the Spirit. And I can be a child of God, person of worth. Mm -hmm. John 1.12 says, for all who believed in him, that means trusted him, and accepted him, he gives the right to become children of God, and that's who you are. Mm -hmm. And so this gift of identity is is given to us. What difference does that make in your life? It makes a huge difference. That I, I'm more than where I've been mm -hmm. and, and what I've done and what I've been through. Um, in all of those areas that you mentioned, like when I'm uh, – when I'm getting it right as a dad, fine. I'm great with that identity. But when I'm messing it up, yeah. <laughs> then the, if that was my whole identity, that, yeah. that, that could be crushing. But yeah. I know that when I do mess it up as a husband, as a father, as a pastor, that I'm at that point still so incredibly loved by my father in heaven. Yeah. And everything else could be taken away and my identity is still in him. And that's why this identity, however else you want to define yourself. I mean, that's, you know, everybody's uh, free and has your own free will. And uh, so I would encourage everybody, if you want an identity that it's not going to be shaken or taken, to mm. claim this identity as a child of God, mm -hmm. person of worth. Because if you are a child of God, if you're a cog, that means you're a pal person of worth. And so starting there means that we're more than our mistakes. We're more than our family. We're more than old memories. We're more than uh, uh, our things that we have just blown it at. Mm -hmm. uh, we're more than our roles, which can change. We're more than our job, which can change. And so uh, that is a huge gift, the gift of identity. And you don't find that anywhere else. No. Uh, you, you find it in the church. So I, I think the most... Uh powerful moment on Sunday at the Central Campus was in this identity mm. uh, section. Um, so we, we have a lot of homeless folks that, yeah. are, that are part of that campus. Um, and, and, and I said in the middle of this identity section to those uh, homeless folks that are in the room, I want you to know that homeless is not who you are. Yes. It's where you're at. Right. No, no less than anyone else, you are a precious child of God. And the place erupted. Yeah. And I almost had to stop preaching that it just hit me like how often are are they told that they're less than yeah than, than someone yeah. else or because of their position in life right but 
that's the gift of a spirit led church in that yeah. I, in finding your identity. Everyone's equal. Right. In that room. Right. You know, we all are on equal ground right. at the foot of the cross. Right. Yeah. That was powerful. You texted me that uh, later in the day and I, I was cheering in my house uh, <laughs> hearing that because it, it is so freeing, you know, that we're more than, than our worst moments. We're more mm-hmm. than the difficult circumstances that we're in. Uh, I've had to be careful because of my, uh, aortic valve disease to not define myself as a person, you know, what defines me is my artificial heart valve. Mm -hmm. You know, there's more to me than that. Mm -hmm. That is a part of me. But if I let that lead, Mm -hmm. then uh, my life gets really limited really quick. Mm -hmm. Uh, And so, you know, whether it's our, our, our sickness, whether it's our hurt habit or hang up that we tend to identify ourselves with, all that is taken away and we're given a better identity. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And it's the one that's a, a gift to receive not something we have to achieve. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's good stuff. Uh, what about purpose? Purpose. We are going to, uh, this is our contribution to the world, that, mm-hmm. that we're made for more than just sitting in traffic. Mm-hmm. We are made. Thank God. Isn't that the truth? Yeah. yeah, and we're made for more than just trying to make some money or trying mm-hmm. to uh, make it through the day or trying to re- uh, get some accomplishments or, or those kind of things. Mm-hmm. You, you and I have a divine calling on our life that's lived out through our purpose. And um, to be able to know, I wrote in my journal this morning, uh, remember, Wes, the top agenda today is to love others Hmm. as you love yourself. No matter what I get done on my to-do list, that that's the reason Hmm. to get up. That's the reason to to move. And every one of us that follow Jesus have that common call Mm -hmm. that we are to live as the light and the love of Jesus wherever we are. Mm -hmm. Um, And then there's uniqueness to that call Mm -hmm. where because each one of us have different gifts and Mm -hmm. each one of us have different uh, uh, abilities and and our heart's passion and our personalities, different experiences are different. So when we uh, uh, think about our purpose, just just to know that uh, can help bring healing to our life because you ever wonder, you know, why am I here? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Why was I made? Mm -hmm. God wants to answer that question for you. Mm Uh, you're made in the image of God. You're made uh, to to receive Christ and to walk with Christ in your heart. You're, a Christian means to be a little Christ, mm-hmm. and that's what we we live for, and that's what's going to last. Mm-hmm. You know, I've had several homes. I had my home torn apart in the storm. We got it back together now, but homes come and go, mm-hmm. uh, cars come and go, achievements come and go, jobs come and go, uh, roles come and go. But what lasts is what we invest our life in. And it's mm-hmm. the work of God we have the privilege of joining in mm-hmm. that I think makes all the difference. And mm-hmm. you're not going to find that anywhere else, not, mm-hmm. not, at, not at school. I mean, school's great. Uh, not a job training, not in the military. All those are wonderful. But mm-hmm. in the church is where we find our God-given calling mm-hmm. in life. And we're going to talk a lot more about that this fall mm-hmm. in a series that we have designed for this uh, coming season. Cool. So w- what would you say to folks from any of our three campuses or anyone else listening, uh, like oh, a practical next step right now before we go any further into this series? Like, yeah. h- how do I lean into this? So I would, I would uh, test drive being devoted to a group of people at Grace Church. We have lots of different communities at Grace Church, uh, churches within a church. Mm-hmm. And to find one of those that you can serve with, a small group, uh, to be a part of, or a Bible study to attend, just just to put your uh, more than your toe in, mm-hmm. uh, you know, wade in a little bit, mm-hmm. and because the best of these experiences we're talking about are not something that's uh, something we can just kind of make up. I mean, it happens naturally mm-hmm. as we develop relationships with one another. And the more real we are with one another, the more we share life with one another. And if you can find uh, three to six people. Uh, you can know not only their name, but their nickname, then then we're moving towards that mm-hmm. experience that we're talking about. Mm-hmm. And, and I would say just 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 be here. Be, be a part of it uh, e- each week. And if you can be in person, be in person. If you can only watch online, please o- watch online, but but mm-hmm. but make it a thing to be be there mm-hmm. and to be a part of what God is doing. I think that devotion is what spurs on uh, some of these Miracle discoveries of a, of a sense of belonging, mm-hmm. a sense of identity, and a sense of purpose. Yeah, and, and we don't always get it right, but that that's our truest heart as a church is that everyone would feel known and seen and and, and loved by, know that they are loved by God and loved by us. And 
uh, imperfect as we are at doing that, the way we get better at it is, is investing in that devotion yeah. with one another. That's right. And we, we practice this with, with one another, and then we go live it out in the world. Right. So that uh, more people would know that when God looks at them, they, that God wants to be with them, and God sees them right where they are, and, and God uh, wants to love them and mm. make sure that they know that love. Well, hey, this has been good. I think it's a good uh, uh, first first start for us. I hope this has been helpful for uh, for anyone listening, watching. Uh, just remember that life is so much more than traffic. It's so much more than the commute. And uh, we hope that here at Grace Church, you're finding that belonging and identity uh, and purpose. And I hope you'll join us next time where we'll, we'll be uh, joined with, by Pastor Casey talking about part yep. two of this, this series, Life yep. Together. She's the first writer for uh, part two. So this weekend, you'll hear uh, part two in several different voices. And and uh, we'll come back together next week and try this again. All right. Sounds All right. good.